Welcome back to Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on terrorism and spoiling the peace. I want to start off by giving you a little bit of background in when we see terrorist attacks happening. They are not randomly distributed. They do not take place in even numbers year-round. Instead, what we see is that there is a clumping of terrorist attacks around peace talks. And I think this gives us two things that are worth discussing. First, this shows that terrorist organizations, by and large, are responsive to incentives. If terrorist organizations were purely motivated by wanting to go out and kill people, we would not see clumping around peace talks. We would see terrorist attacks occurring year-round. So number one here, terrorists are doing something strategic and they're likely affecting some sort of bargaining environment. The second question then is why are we having this increase in terrorist attacks around these peace talks? Why is it the case that when two parties are trying to bargain, we see terrorist attacks being more frequent? And that's the puzzle that I want to address in this lecture. I want to give you a reason why that might be the case. And so to do that, let's set up, uh, set up a situation here. So let's think about the preferences of three groups. We have a government, uh, that's going to be G, and a rebel group, R, and they're going to be negotiating. Let's suppose that this government really just wants to get peace. That's all it wants. It doesn't want to have a conflict with the rebel group. It would really like peace. That's its number one goal here. However, the government, G, is unsure whether the rebel group actually wants peace or not. Is the rebel group really demanding and how much it wants to the point that G is not actually going to be wanting to settle with that rebel group? Or is the rebel group actually truly interested in peace? So the government knows that it wants peace, but it really only wants to have a peaceful settlement with a group that actually wants to have peace as well. Now, I said that there was going to be a third group here, and that third group is a group of extremists. So if R wants peace, if the rebel group wants peace, it's going to actively police extremists within its country or its territory or whatever's going on inside of this civil war area. All right, so if I'm a rebel group and I actually want peace, then I'm going to be willing to go out and try to root out my extremists in my country to preserve that peace, to convince you that, hey, I'm a peaceful group. Now, the government... Obviously, given the fact that if it's a rebel group that doesn't want peace is going to let the extremists run wild, is not going to want peace with an uncooperative R-type. So uncooperative R-types, government's not going to want peace with that. The government would want to continue a conflict. So what the government's going to be doing when it's sitting down at this bargaining table, thinking about whether to negotiate an agreement or not, it's going to try to judge whether the rebel group is cooperative or uncooperative. And if it's cooperative, it would like to have a peaceful settlement with the rebel group. And if it's uncooperative, it would like to continue the conflict. Extremists, on the other hand, well, by virtue of their name, we're just going to suppose that they always want conflict. They are really resolved in their issues. And so the kinds of concessions that the government is willing to give up just aren't going to satisfy extremists. So they're going to want to continue the conflict. That means it's up to the extremists to convince the government, G, that the rebel group R is uncooperative, regardless of whether R is truly cooperative or uncooperative. If I'm an extremist, I want to attack the government if the rebel group is uncooperative that makes sense but also if the rebel group is cooperative then I want to continue attacking anyway despite the fact that I am going against what the rebel group wants as a whole all right so those are the preferences there now let's think about this let's think about the monitoring problem that occurs when you are trying to get terrorists rooted out of your country Policing is not fully effective. Even if you're a cooperative rebel group and you actively try to stop the extremists, you might not be successful. Heck, the United States has one of the most powerful domestic police forces in the world, and even here in the United States, we can't stop all terrorist attacks occurring. So if you think about a country that's been ravaged by civil war, certainly their police force is not going to be able to fully root out extremists. It's going to be sort of random whether you're actually successful or not. You can try, and you can try hard, and that's going to improve your chances, but even if you're trying really, really hard, you might still fail. And what's particularly problematic about this, if you're a government, is that if you're trying to figure out whether the rebel group is actually actively trying to police or not, you can't really do that. Policing effort is hard to observe from an outside party. The rebel group knows whether it's policing or not, but the government can't really see the direct action of the rebel group. So what the government has to do as a result is make inferences based off of whether an attack occurred or not. So again, the government can't actually observe fully whether the rebel group is deciding to root out extremists or not. 
trying to stop those extremists from conducting a terrorist attack or not, so the government can only make an inference based off of whether a terrorist attack occurred. All right. Well, if that's the case, then the government is going to be updating its belief about the rebel group based off of whether an attack occurred or not. So suppose no attack occurred. What is the government supposed to infer about this? Well, the government should be inferring that the rebel group is active in its police efforts and it stopped the extremists in the rebels territory from conducting an operation. Right, Because if the rebel group was this uncooperative type, then the rebel group would not have tried to police the extremists, and so the extremists would have been able to commit a terrorist attack, no problem. So if we see that no attack occurred, we as the government are like, ah, okay, things are great, we are actually dealing with a very cooperative rebel group, and we should be negotiating a settlement. Now what's tricky here is that suppose that you actually observe an attack. What does the government now infer about the rebel group? Well, this is problematic because it can't actually know for sure that the rebel group is uncooperative. Because, again, the rebel group could have been a cooperative type that actually tried to root out the extremists and it just failed. So observing a terrorist attack is not a red flag that the rebel group is uncooperative. But your belief that the rebel group is uncooperative based off of the fact that an attack occurred is going to increase. So after you observe an attack, you are less likely to think that the rebel group is a cooperative type. You're more likely to think that they're an uncooperative type. And so when you're sitting down at that bargaining table, having an attack occurring is this actually a red flag perhaps it's going to make you more reluctant overall to actually come up with that settlement so while this isn't a direct fact that you know for sure that the rebel group is uncooperative based off of the fact that a terrorist attack occurred you're scared you're more scared and if you're more scared you're less likely to engage in a settlement which means the extremists in this case can win it can convince the government not rightly this is a false inference that the government's going to be making but nevertheless the extremists can do this they can convince that the government is going to believe or they can trick the government into believing that the rebel group is this uncooperative type and get continued conflict which is exactly what the extremists would want so that is how terrorists can spoil the peace. Now, it's not the only reason that terrorists commit attacks, and we'll talk more about that in the next lecture. Hope you enjoyed this, and hope to see you next time. Take care.